and we are back for part five of my tutorial series on flash print which is aimed at beginners so in previous videos we have looked at idex printing support structures uh, the basic controls we've got down here on the right hand side in our little toolbar and also just to how to you know select your printer nozzle etc so today we are now going into slicing which is a reasonably big subject. So I'm going to be breaking this up into lots of smaller videos to try and allow us to explain things in better detail. We're gonna start off with basic mode and then the basic print uh, dialogue option in expert. So I have got my model loaded up. Let me introduce you to Rockcat, which if you haven't seen it before, is actually something I created and stuck up on Thingiverse just to annoy my wife and it's going to be the model that we're slicing for today so the button up in the top middle which i just clicked is the uh, look it's the start slicing button i'm sure you've seen it it's pretty hard to miss now i have put it into basic mode so that we can have a look at the uh, the differences here right quick so we can again change our nozzle in here if we so desired we can select from a range of materials that are preloaded from Flashforge, which are compatible with your printer. So if we weren't running this on a guider, say we were running it on the, um, uh, off the top of my head, I'll go with the Creator Pro 2, which only has a 240 degree nozzle, we would actually be missing out on some of this material. Like I think they can do ABS, but they can't do ASA and stuff like that. So depending upon what printer you have, this will change. Also, depending upon the nozzle size, it'll also change. So this is profiles that Flashforge have got loaded. So you can do custom settings to suit the material. So what you could, you know, what you could do is actually uh, find out the uh, temps that you need, change your nozzle, and then just manually do it in expert, which we'll get to. But anyway. So underneath that is the slice profile, which is in the option of a, of a couple of buttons, which again, changes based on the printer that you have. So the guider has standard fine and fast. My creator free has standard and that's it. You can still do similar things on the creator. You just have to do them manually rather than click a button. So standard, it's standard. So we've got a mid of the range sort of layer height of a 0.18 millimeters, a fill density of 15%, with a print speed of 60 millimeters per second, with a two walls or shell count, however you want to call it. If we move over onto fine, we can see that our layer height has decreased down to 0.12 of a millimeter. The fill density is still the same at 15%. Our print speed is slightly lower at 50 millimeters a second, and we have a greater shell count at three instead of two. And fast, is a higher layer height, 0.3. So we've actually gone from 1.8 all the way up to 0.3. We've dropped our fill density down to 10% and we've actually increased our print speed right up to 80 millimeters a second. And we're still running a shell count of two. So the difference between them, standard is a good mix of quality and speed. Fine is for absolute high quality, but it will uh, take, uh, significant, I say significantly longer to print. Uh, and fast is exactly how it sounds like. It's fast. It's quick. It's if you don't really care about quality or it's not the uh, you know You don't need huge amounts of quality and you don't mind layer lines That's your other option Clicking expert mode which if you missed it is that little grayed out sort of button down here in the bottom left hand corner will change things So the first section we're looking is the printer screen, which is very similar to basic mode we have our machine type up the top, our nozzle size, which we looked at before, which is selectable uh, based on what's available for the machine, the material selection. This box, not too sure why it exists. I've only ever seen 1.75 millimeters, but you know there might be some printers out there that are compatible with 2.85, I think is the other one. So you, you know, you'd be able to change that. Our slicer profile is now in a drop box, standard fine and fast, hasn't changed. We can now also select our temperature, which back in basic mode we saw absolutely nothing regarding temperature so here you can go all right my normal pla does not like 210 degrees hypothetically i can make this 200 by just uh either entering the information or clicking our hour buttons platform temperature of 30 degrees um be perfectly honest i don't think i ever do pla at 30 i, I like it a fair bit hotter um i run it at 60 but that's look that's what i do doesn't mean it's going to work for you, so don't take my temperatures and, and start copying them. 
the next section is what will help with that, which is temperature control list, this little checkbox here. What this allows is variable temperatures. So I hope you know what a, what a temp tower is. If you don't, it's probably worth finding out. Let's, for the sake of uh, showing it off, bring a web page over here. And temp tower. Show you what I'm talking about, and this will explain why um, the control list is handy. So, this little device here on Thingiverse, which you can download obviously for free is used to test print quality at different temperatures. So that's what it is and you know how it's used. I'll probably try and do a video based on just that later. Uh, but this is how you will actually achieve a proper temp tower is you will select your control module. So this is what the temp tower control list will actually affect the right extruder or the platform. And then underneath that we have a little plus icon which if we click will bring up another dialog box with a start layer, an end layer and a temperature function. So let's just say that once we get to layer 45 to layer 100, we want it to be running, I'll make it hotter, 235 degrees. So at this layer, it'll bump the temperature up from 210 to 235. At the end layer, assuming that the model goes over 100 layers, it'll drop the temperature back down to your standard extruder temp. And if you were going to do a, um, if you were going to do a temp tower, you'd actually probably start this at 230 and then have the temperature decrease every other layer. So you can add multiple layers. We can click that again. We can do a 101 to 139 to 15. Hit enter. And so you can have you know, heaps of them. And if obviously it duplicates, it'll actually give you a message. And if you don't want to use it, you can select the layer and hit the little trash can icon next to the plus icon to add them. And that is our printer dialog screen in export mode and basic mode. And obviously at any point, if you're happy with your settings, our slice button is that hard to miss green button right there. So the next section we will look at will be general so I hope you'll stay tuned for that, and I'll speak to you then.